had a moment of freak out. I was like, oh no, the piston's backwards. But then I forgot that I'd actually turned the motor around while I was removing the head. Alrighty, quick update time. My new motor's come. It is 40, 40, and presumably in there, 40. But what I wanted to do was, there's my 56 tooth sprocket. Just comparing it to the size of the, st the standard 44. Uh, that is a massive difference. Interestingly enough, the uh, new sprocket has uh, elongated holes, uh, which uh, I don't like that. I feel like that's opening up too much potential for movement. Now, just looking at the CDI here, considering this is supposed to be the upgraded kit, this has the old style spring connection, which is if you go ahead and pull that boot off, it is literally just two wires poking into the insulation to make its connection. Um, look, it works. It's just, I prefer the cap type. Um, it's just frustrating that this is supposed to be the upgraded kit and they're still sending me cheap and nasty parts like that. All right. The NT carb appears to be the new or newer style. And what we can do to check that is if throw all my rubbish out the way. Uh, what I want to do, oh, that springs under a lot of tension. What we're looking at here is the notches. All right, there we go, it's finally in focus. The newer carbs have five notches uh, instead of four so-called upgraded kit comes with the same old crappy plastic handles the same old crappy push button clutch um, yeah that's quality thanks for that all right this kit has earned itself some redemption by sending me a proper tensioner with the four bolts uh, chrome muffler which I won't use I'll just pinch the black one off the other bike because I don't like shiny bits and some new chain so the other downside to this kit whereas the other ones earn bonus points there are no spare gaskets no instructions they haven't really put any effort into this whatsoever which... all right tiny little bit of scuffing on the paint in the case in transit but nothing looks bent out of shape um, that's a clean exhaust gasket so thank goodness that they didn't paint over the top of that Come on now. can appreciate the fact that they've put these little studs in here didn't use the ones all right so Straight away, that bar in the middle of the exhaust port, I had that exact same one. I'd say this is the exact same series as engine as I've got on the Mark IV right now. Before I even put the motor on the frame, I got out the Dremel and I ground that bar out from the exhaust port because that's a restriction <laughs> and I don't like that. There looks to be a little bit of flack in there certainly some paint over spray a bit of rust maybe yeah that's rust up there but we'll get all that cleaned up immediately i notice that these studs are basically loose which means that's going to be problematic in the future i'm not a fan of these studs anyway i tend to feel like that they snap really easily um, but that's part of what pulling the motor is all about is making sure that everything's up to the standards you'd like it to be and taking the opportunity to fix everything you can before it goes on the bike. Alrighty, look at the size of that intake port. Also looking at this, it's not 
tiny and round, but seeing down there, there is a lot of crap that I'll have to clean up. It won't take me long. But looking inside the port just now, there's a little bit of roughage, which focus on the intake side isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I am going to want to clean up that surface rust as well because I don't want any of that getting into the motor. We are looking at a painted surface on the head. Um, the issue I have with that mainly is the threads in there. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead with my little sanding bit and I'm just going to take the paint off there uh, because I, it's going to burn off anyway and that's just impurities that's going to foul up my plug and I don't know, I don't like that. Maybe someone can tell me whether or not I should be leaving that paint on, but to me it feels like that should be matching with that. Um, so we're looking fairly good in here. Uh, that head gasket doesn't look too bad. I'm going to put the phone down before I damage anything. Uh, sometimes you get them and they're completely munted out. I mean, it's a little bit, you know, there's a bit of a ridge there, but that's nothing to write home about. Now you have got to be so careful in doing anything with this. Um, it's really, really, really scratched up at the moment. It's because you know, I use a sanding bit on the Dremel. Now that actually looks rough as guts, but that is an old pad. Most of the grit's worn off it, and it's basically just the material underneath. That's all you really want to do to get rid of the paint. Um, to get rid of the residue there, I haven't got any paint thinners or gun wash or anything like that. So I'm just going to use some nail polish remover. does exactly the same thing. Um, that'll cut through the rest of that. So we'll get onto that and we'll see how it looks at the end. All right, that is as good as we're getting it. It is really, really roughed in, up in there. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anything finer to really polish that up, but there's no real gouges. But I do need to reiterate, you do need to be extremely careful, um, especially around that lip there. You don't want to be putting any gouges in, which, disclaimer, I, I didn't. <clears throat> Even when I was using uh, the Dremel, it is just a feather touch. You are only wanting to put pressure on the paint, not the metal. Um, as you can see, there's still some residue uh, around there that I'm not terribly worried about. I'm just not willing to cut any deeper into that. Um, what can I say? We can find out together whether or not it's going to be fine. Um, Maybe somebody can tell me whether or not I did a good or a bad thing by doing that. Was I better off leaving it alone and uh, leaving the engine combustion to clean up the paint? Or was I better off doing what I did? I had a moment of freak out. I was like, oh no, the piston's backwards. But then I forgot that I'd actually turned the motor around while I was removing the head. Um, nice and greased and most importantly is this gasket here is in mint condition it's actually a good quality gasket not the crappy cardboard that you normally get um, so i'm going to go ahead and put the block aside look at the ports on this thing the transfer ports are open uh, i actually don't know what difference that makes but i just know on the engine that's on the mark four was the exact same as this and it's run so much better than any of the other engines that I've had that have had like, you know, a blockage across here. Um, so this design is a thumbs up in my opinion. Um, so what I'm going to do is, that's a better angle there, is I'm going to get in there and I'm going to remove that bar from the exhaust port because that's a restriction that I just cannot bear. 
And the plus side is it doesn't go all the way down the port. It's literally just a little restriction at the end there. Um, it took me about 15 minutes the first time around. First time I ever did that to remove it. Which wasn't that big of a deal. And do you know what? The engine has been running positively fantastically on the Mark IV. I never ran it without that bar, so I don't know what kind of difference that restriction is going to make. But any restriction in the exhaust port is a bad thing. Um, other than that, the, the ports don't seem too bad. So I won't spend too much time on it, but look at this. That is a paint run inside the cylinder wall. Uh, so I'm going to have to do my best to clean that up. That's that's really, really disappointing. Uh, but we will go ahead and polish that before uh, we put it back on. So I'm not going to record the whole process of me cleaning up the ports and basically putting the whole motor back together. I did a whole series on that with the 50cc. They're long, time-consuming. There's about uh, six or eight videos on that motor alone. The process is identical. So if you want to check out how I did that, certainly go and watch those videos. But uh, other than that, I'll check in once I've finished working on that jug. All right, progress report. We have cut through the very middle. Seen there. <clears throat> Looking at all this mess there, rest assured, I'll be very, very vigilant about getting every single last filing out of that cylinder. Because that will destroy an engine so quickly. All right, back to work. All right, we're nearly there. Just got some minor tidying up to do first. All right. Not exactly neat. That's just paint, by the way. It's not massive gouges. It's really, really smooth in there, all things considered. Um, but that's one successfully open port. And still got a bit of cleaning to do. As you can see, the light's picking up all the little bits. Uh, so a bit more polishing to do. For me, not with a Dremel or anything else, just with a rag to get all of that clean. And then it can go back on the motor. All right, while we've got the Dremel out, a little experiment I've been wanting to do with an exhaust for a while. I'm gonna come along and I'm just gonna cut this off there. Normally it sticks right the way up there. I don't know what, if any difference it's gonna make, but I'm curious to find out, so let's do it. All right, while we've got the Dremel out, a little experiment I've been wanting to do with an exhaust for a while. I'm going to come along and I'm just going to cut this off there. Normally it sticks right the way up there. I don't know what, if any difference it's going to make, but I'm curious to find out, so let's do it. All righty. Pretty obvious to see what I've done there. The best thing about that is... I can use that cap on any old exhaust and I don't have to put up with a shiny one. And best thing is, if it's terrible, I can just replace it. So we'll be very interested to see how that's going to work. Look at the state of that.